Okay guys, today we're going to mix it up and talk about a survival topic that I think is a little bit different and honestly very interesting. Now, unless you've been living under a rock for the past three months, you'll probably be quite aware of the fact that Alaska has been on, in a perpetual state of fire, primarily through forest fires. And while many people are talking about how that affects the climate and how that is, you know, thawing out permafrost and all that kind of fun stuff, largely coming from people down the lower 48 who are not actually up here living in it, there's a lot of disinformation, but I won't get into that political banter. <laughs> but today I'm going to be talking about and showing you guys something that was brought kind of into my mind by that topic of fire, wild forest fires or wildland fires and just it got me thinking about something related to survival and that is the feasibility or how feasible is it to be in a freshly burnt forest fire you know one that's been put out less than six months ago it started less than six months ago and is recently put out what is left there obviously a forest fires means that you know a fire has come through and burnt a lot of things but what is left i mean we know that large established trees will probably be left but is there going to be anything else what resources can you use if you are stuck in a forest fire uh to survive, you know, what, what resources are there to use, and a lot of people may think that that's a rather unrealistic circumstance, and I'm not going to say that it is or isn't, however, I think there's a fair chance that someone could potentially be stuck in one if, say, a plane crashes in the middle of it. These forest fires, like the one that my friend and I, that you guys are seeing right now, is actually encompassed over 20,000 acres, so that's no small portion of land, and while we were at just one side of this fire, had you landed or been put into somewhere in the middle of this fire, there's really no easy way of just, you know, walking out into the fresh, non, you know, fire-damaged woodlands. I'm going to be ch sharing with you guys my experiences, my friend and I's experiences of survival in a forest fire or a land that just got burned by a forest fire. So to start off, I have to go over kind of my notions. And like I said, when we think about a fire, we think of something that's coming through and burning and consuming a lot of the natural resources that we as survivalists, bushcrafters, hunters, and uh, you know, wildlife people, we naturally look for to use or to observe. And so when you think about the wildfire, a lot of these things are decimated. However, going into a forest fire burn area, I was rather surprised at the amount of wood or timber that was still standing. Now, of course, all the trees that you guys are seeing used are 100% killed. In fact, most of the trees we were actually able to pull up from the ground by their roots, showing that their roots had been burned out. And so these weren't just trees that were surface damaged by fire. These were trees that were completely dead there's no chance of them ever you know regaining their life so before you guys get too safety sally with this or you know conservative about the environment uh these trees were all very much dead there's no life in them and they're not going to be growing anymore so anyways i was surprised to see at the amount of trees that were actually still completely usable now granted all the trees like i said were burnt and on the very surface there was a layer of carbon and i noticed that as another thing that it seemed like everything you touched was just completely covered in carbon i mean i'm going to roll in some pictures of this tom brown tracker which is the knife that we used uh, solely for the the adventure and if this handle started off green when I first got this knife, but as you can see, it is now like black. And that's just because, you know, handling this knife around all that carbon, I mean, you guys can see my hands here, my gloves are just completely black when they should be like a greenish kind of tan color. So you guys can see just how much carbon was on absolutely everything out there. So definitely a high carbon situation, which is not a lot of fun because it makes a lot of your stuff very dirty. But like I said, there is still a great deal of resources to be had out there. So that's the first plus for me in this environment. There's still a lot of resources to be used. The other plus, though this is a bit circumstantial as I'm also gonna roll in, 
is the fact that there was still water out there. Um, we did receive a lot of heavy rain in the past few weeks. About the past three weeks, we've gotten a lot of rain. So this does mean that... Um, so this does mean that, you know, the rain, the water didn't necessarily survive through the fire in the small, like, little puddle that I found. However, it's not like the land is so parched or so desperate for water that when it does rain, it just immediately gets soaked into the ground. The difficulties of working in an environment such as a fresh fireplace or a freshly burned area is the two largest concerns are, one, your tinders are essentially gone. You really have to search hard for tinder, and you really have to search hard to find something that will easily ignite because like I discussed you may be able to find things like charred pieces of wood that you can use for a fire that will catch easier than just normal wood however the concern becomes trying to find that very level of birch barks your level of pine needles things like that have been consumed very fast and very readily by a wildfire so finding tenders is going to or was a challenge and the other concern that we ran into in the issue and why we ended up using a mylar blanket or a couple mylar blankets instead of just a pine boughs is, or pine boughs or sphagnum moss, is the fact that the sphagnum moss that grows on the ground all over the place has been largely consumed by fire. And of course, pine boughs being that they have an oil in them that is highly volatile, also, all of those were consumed by the fire. So trying to find natural insulating materials would be a challenge. Yeah, what I noticed is the fire, another thing that I noticed about the wildfire is that it burned very unevenly. So in ways, it wasn't like a just a clear-cut path of fire burn in a radius. It's a very jagged edge. So if you do find pockets, even within the fire, that had not been burnt, that had not been touched, that still had things like pine boughs, sphagnum moss that you could use, that still had tinders available. So while everyone's fast thinking about how detrimental these forest fires are, just know that there's a pretty high chance that you could very well, if you knew what you were doing, survive in one of these areas that was freshly burned. Now granted, like I said, there are certain disadvantages, such as there's not going to be wild edibles, there's not going to be many wild game animals within these places, but there are advantages, such as having a high amount of, having a low brush density and a high amount of building materials. So anyways, guys, that, those are some of my high takeaways from actually, you know, going out there and practicing survival in a forest fire.